can you escape to the rustic majesty of America's Northwest whilst you're at Walt Disney World? Find out today on Walt Disney World Adults Only. <laughs> Welcome Royal Highnesses, I'm Dan and you're watching Walt Disney World Adults Only. Today we're going to be talking about Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort. Not to be mistaken with Disney's Fort Wilderness Campground and Cabins, they are different resorts but are very often confused. I stayed at Wilderness Lodge in 2015 and have visited on every single trip since. It remains my number one favourite resort in the whole of Walt Disney World. In this video, I'll give you information about Wilderness Lodge as well as telling you my experience of staying there. We will also hear from Taylor, Carol and Jackie too. Whilst they haven't stayed, they've all visited and I know you'll be interested in their views and impressions as well. On that point, I'm really interested to hear your views and experiences of Wilderness Lodge as well. So please tell me about them in the comments below. Disney's Wilderness Lodge is a AAA Four Diamond Award winning resort hotel located in the Magic Kingdom Resort area on Bay Lake. It opened on the 28th of May 1994 and the resort is located next to Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground, albeit as I said before they are distinct resorts from one another. This hotel is themed on the national parks of the western United States and features both natural and Native American elements. The main building was actually modelled after the Old Faithful Inn in Yellowstone National Park and an artificial geyser and hot springs are located on the resort grounds. This resort has eight floors of lodge pole pine imported from Oregon as well as 55 foot authentic totem poles and an 82 foot fireplace representing the colourful rocks of the Grand Canyon. The lodge is a four star deluxe Disney resort and it's actually divided into three different parts. Firstly, there is the main building, which boasts 729 rooms and three suites, the Honeymoon, Yosemite, and Yellowstone. This hotel also has a club level floor and lounge. Next, there are the Boulder Ridge Villas. These opened in the year 2000 and comprise 181 villas, a mix of studios, one bedroom, and two bedroom villas. These all come with kitchenettes, and the one and two bedrooms also have a living space as well. These are part of the Disney Vacation Club. And finally, and fairly new, since just 2017, are the Copper Creek Villas and Cabins. So the south wing of the main Wilderness Lodge building was converted into 158 DVC units and 26 brand new Cascade Cabins were built right on the waterfront of Bay Lake. This resort has actual nature trails through pine forests and all the while being just a very short boat ride away from the Magic Kingdom. On the subject of the boat, this is a great perk. In addition to the Disney buses, you can take a boat to the Magic Kingdom, to Fort Wilderness Campground, or to Disney's Contemporary Resort. If you've listened to me before, you will know just how much I love a Disney boat. Wilderness Lodge has two pools, the Copper Creek Springs Pool and the Boulder Ridge Cove Pool. The Copper Creek Springs Pool has both hot and cold whirlpool spas and a 67 foot water slide. Boulder Ridge Pool is calmer, more relaxing and more adult. And it has a Whirlpool Spa available too. One of the best things about Wilderness Lodge is the dining options. First, the quick service, Roaring Fork. It has some really unique and some really great options. In my opinion, one of the best quick service resorts in the whole of Walt Disney World. Then, Whispering Canyon Cafe, which is a crazy Old West themed, all you care to enjoy, skillet serving eatery. This restaurant is famed for the cast members in character and their wild shenanigans. Next, I have Artist Point, a former signature dining restaurant which has been transformed to one of Disney's newest character dining locations, Storybook Dining at Artist Point. Here during normal times, you can meet Snow White, Grumpy, Dopey and the Evil Queen. This is a really unique experience, but most people seem to really miss Artist Point as it once was. 
on to Geyser Point Bar and Grill. This is a waterfront bar slash quick service restaurant and it's new since 2017 as well. It's one of my favourite places to relax, dine and drink. Finally, Territory Lounge, the bar which serves some incredible bar snacks. As you can see, there are lots and lots of great dining options at Wilderness Lodge. Wilderness Lodge also has jogging trails, the Sturdy Branches Health and Fitness Centre, a salon, an arcade, a really great shop, campfire activities, bike rentals, and the nicest club level lounge ever. You can even watch the electric water pageant from the waterfront. What is there not to like about this resort? In terms of price point, as with all deluxe resorts, this place is expensive. It is typically slightly lower priced than the resorts on the monorail, and it is one of the cheaper deluxe resorts, although it is anything but cheap. That said, Wilderness Lodge is the cheapest deluxe resort in the Magic Kingdom resort area. So, there is the overview. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments now. Now for our experiences. As you can tell, I really love it here and I'll give you my experiences at the end. Let us start with Jackie. Jackie, you visited here, right? That's right, Dan. I visited several times and still love the peaceful and relaxing atmosphere of the Wilderness Lodge. Sadly, I've not had the opportunity to stay here, but I have had time to wander around the grounds while waiting for my reservations at the restaurants there. I love walking right around the lake, taking, looking at all the different lobbies. My all time favorite is in the main lobby to sit in front of the rocking chair in front of the giant fireplace. It just feels very homey and kind of like I'm maybe in Yellowstone or one of the other national parks. I always try to take the water taxi from the Magic Kingdom to my reservations at Wilderness Lodge. It's a short trip, but it gives you enough time to let your brain and body relax from the hustle and bustle of the Magic Kingdom or whatever other park you're coming from. I've dined at Whispering Canyon Cafe and Storybook Dining at Artist Point. I, I highly recommend these places, but I also recommend getting a reservation as they are both popular places and book up quickly. I've only seen pictures of the guest rooms at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, but if they're anything like the lobby, this is definitely going to be on my list. So that's my experience. How about you, Taylor? I haven't stayed at the Wilderness Lodge either, but I have visited, and when I did, it quickly shot to the top of my bucket list places to stay in Disney World. During our last trip, my husband and I went over by boat to Wilderness Lodge for lunch when we were at the Magic Kingdom and went to Geyser Point. Geyser Point is an incredible option if you can't find food you like in the Magic Kingdom or you're looking for something a little bit different. It is a quick service dining option, but it has a table service feel to it. The outside seating is super relaxing right on the lake. It's a really, really wonderful option, but I'm not going to do a full review here today of Geyser Point. After lunch that day, we decided to go into the main lobby area to experience Wilderness Lodge since we had never been there before. And we instantly knew when we walked in that we wanted to stay there someday. It is incredibly grand and beautiful. The lobby seems to go on forever. It's huge and it has this really warm, comforting feel. My husband is a really outdoorsy guy, so he took to it immediately. And I just loved the theming of it. I mean, Disney generally doesn't go wrong with theming as it is, but they absolutely nailed it with Wilderness Lodge. The location isn't necessarily a draw for me because I'm not the biggest Magic Kingdom fan in the world. Don't come at me, please. But I can see that if you want to spend the majority of your time at the Magic Kingdom, how great of an option this is because the boat ride there was wonderful. I'm a big fan of boat transportation in Disney, so this one was really, really great. And I love that that's an option. 
So with the wonderful theming, the great food options, and the warm and comforting feel that I got just in the lobby, I 100% want to stay at the Wilderness Lodge someday, and I really, really hope I get to. Knowing you, Carol, you probably wouldn't stay at the Wilderness Lodge. Why not? No, Taylor, it's not that I wouldn't want to stay here. I just can't justify the cost. Everything that I would want to do, I can do as a visitor. I don't need to sleep there and wake up in the morning to experience those things. It is a beautiful resort, but let me give you some figures. I looked at the prices of Wilderness Lodge, Port Orleans French Quarter, and All Star Music over a Valentine weekend. Standard room in each case. For two nights at the Wilderness Lodge, I could stay almost four nights at Port Orleans French Quarter and six nights at All Star Music. Two nights, six nights. What am I going to choose? We went there to eat at Storybook Dining and the trip was lovely. We left Magic Kingdom in the evening and traveled by boat over to the Wilderness Lodge. And the trip itself was sort of magical because the lights and the sounds of the Magic Kingdom slowly faded away and it got darker, um, dimmed lighting as you approached the Wilderness Lodge. And you really felt like you had somehow time warped into the wilderness. When we docked, it was dimly lit, enough that you could see and not fall, but it wasn't that bright in your face that you see at Magic Kingdom. It was a bit of a walk to the lodge, so you walked and you really got that sort of wilderness vibe. When we approached the lodge, it was amazing. You don't want to call it a log cabin, although that's sort of the design of it, because it was huge. It was a lodge. Big, thick wood beams, large windows. As we walked into the lobby, it seemed quieter, even though there were a bunch of people around. It gave you the impression that it would be okay to just pull up next to the fireplace, grab a book and a glass of wine and just hang out. There wasn't that rushed feel that you see in some of the other resort lobbies. We ate at Storybook Dining, which was fabulous. The character interactions were some of the best I'd ever had. Uh, maybe it was because I was wearing these ears that I had made, but the Evil Queen loved them. She made sure that the photographer took several pictures of them, but the real point of the trip was to experience the character interaction and to experience the Wilderness Lodge. Both things that I could do without paying that room rate. Now back to Dan, who I know has stayed there. In fact, I think this is his favorite resort on property. Am I correct, Dan? Thanks, Carol. I've only stayed at three Walt Disney World resorts myself, Wilderness Lodge, Port Orleans French Quarter, and Animal Kingdom Lodge. And of the three, this is my absolute favorite. Honestly though, Wilderness Lodge wasn't even on my list of places to stay at all. I hadn't even heard of it at the time. I called the Walt Disney Travel Company to book a stay at the Yacht Club but it was fully booked. The cast member I spoke to suggested Wilderness Lodge and told me what a beautiful resort it was. At the time, there was some building construction going on and so the rooms were priced slightly cheaper than they would be normally. And I booked a club level suite for a really reasonable price. I think that these rooms are now just called club level deluxe rooms. The welcome I got when I arrived was incredible. I was met from the bus by a very happy cast member, led through the lobby to the club level check-in podium I was then shown around the club level lounge, free alcohol, and then taken down to my room for a tour. Yes, a tour of my room. She showed me all around my room, where everything was and how everything worked. We had a kind of living room, a bedroom with two queen size beds, two balconies and a bathroom. The room was really homely and themed like a room at an authentic lodge. The lobby here is just stunning. So much attention to detail. 
The fire is wonderful after you've been caught out in the rain, relaxing on those cute rocking chairs, and the vastness of the space and the beautiful totem poles, just incredible. Everything about the Wilderness Lodge just feels relaxing, even down to the pine, ambery smell that you can smell literally everywhere. The boat across the Magic Kingdom was so convenient, and of course you've got the buses there too. The buses are sometimes shared with the Contemporary Resort and the Polynesian, and I'll be honest and tell you that I was not a fan of that. Being the impatient person I am, I just wanted to get to where I was going. I didn't want to go via other resorts, but fortunately it didn't happen too often. I stayed for 11 nights and actually have not a single bad thing to say. Roaring Fork is truly an excellent quick service restaurant, and I would still say that it's one of the best restaurants in the whole of Walt Disney World in terms of quick service. When I first arrived, I had a focaccia bread with roast beef, blue cheese, a dressing and some salad. And it was literally just so mouth-wateringly tasty. I can't even describe how good this sandwich was. Having the club level access meant I had access to breakfast and appetizers and desserts and alcohol pretty much all day long. There was something available to eat and drink. And I really, really did overeat on that trip. And I drank too much too, because it was all included. But club level there was just perfect. After a long day at the park, coming back and going up to the club level, sitting on a really comfy sofa with a free bottle of wine, looking over the lobby and just relaxing in what was pretty much an exclusively adult only space was just, I can't even tell you, it was just lovely. I also ate at Whispering Canyon Cafe on this trip and I have to say that the food there was really, really great, but the restaurant was just a little bit too rowdy for me. In this restaurant, kids are encouraged to run around and play games, which is really great for families. But personally, I would have preferred not to have had kids running around me whilst I was trying to eat my food. Our server was really funny though, and she was in character the whole time. This restaurant is a little bit like 50s Primetime Cafe, but the food here is much, much better. In 2017, I visited Wilderness Lodge to dine at newly opened Geyser Point Bar and Grill. This was an amazing find. A quick service dining plan credit for table service quality food brought to your table. Sat between the lake and the pool, this really is a relaxing little gem of a place. I remember having a bison burger, some cocktails, catching up with some friends, just relaxing. I highly recommend this place. And in 2019, I again visited to dine at Storybook Dining at Artist Point. Now, I never ate here when this was a signature fine dining restaurant, so I cannot compare with what it was like before, but I was so disappointed in the food at this restaurant. It was like canteen food, set menu food, mass produced and left under hot lamps. On every trip, I always take time to explore Wilderness Lodge. It holds such great memories, and I always try to find my room too. I haven't been inside the new cabins yet, but they're right on the waterfront and they look incredible. In summary, my favourite resort. Visit here, stay here, dine here, explore. We've already covered Animal Kingdom Lodge and Port Orleans French Quarter. I'll link these two videos in the description below. Coming very soon, we have Coronado Springs Resort and Pop Century 2. So look out for these new videos coming very soon. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've liked it, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you like our channel, please click subscribe. And hit the bell as well so you know when our next video lands. Finally, if you're not a member of our Adults Only Facebook group, please consider joining. We have a unique perspective on adult Disney trips. You'll find the link in the description down below and we will be continuing this discussion along with many many others. And in the meantime remember never grow up.